human beings in a mob, what's a mob to a king? What's a king to a god? What's a god to a non-believer who don't believe in anything? Will he make it out alive? All right, all right. No church in the wild. Now, Travis Scott on stage the other night said, I want to see some rages. Who wants to rage? He was saying this just before the crowd surged and a bunch of people died. The video of him doing this, it's been kind of hard to find on the internet. I'm sure they're trying to scrub anything that could be criminally culpable. And so far, we know that at least eight people died at Travis Scott's Astro World Festival and hundreds more were injured as investigators sought to determine why and how the surging crowd turned deadly. Now, the Live Nation uh, powers that be who are running the concert, they stopped it 30 minutes earlier than planned, but that was 40 minutes after Houston city officials said a mass casualty event had begun. Hmm. But we'll get to back to that in a minute. Um, here we have a clip of Kylie Jenner's baby's dad inciting violence way back in 2015. Get that motherfucker, get him! You tried to take my shoe? You wanna be a thief? Fuck him up! Fuck him up! Fuck him up! People haven't been hurt at his concerts before, and Travis Scott, in fact, has faced some minor criminal charges before because of concerts, uh, one in Chicago and one in Arkansas. Back in 2017, Travis Scott got arrested after he encouraged uh, fans to bypass security and rush the stage, which left a security guard, a cop, and several others injured at a concert down in Arkansas. And in a different incident in the Chi-Town, he was sentenced, actually, to a year of probation after he pled guilty to reckless conduct charges stemming from a 2015 incident in Chicago at the Lollapalooza Music Festival, um, where Chicago officials said Travis Scott encouraged fans to vault security bar barricades. And nobody was even hurt at that time, and he got put on probation. Now, Travis Scott's first Astro World Tour back in 2019 grossed over $53 million, which gave him the most revenue of any hip-hop tour that year, and Astro World 2021 was poised to be much bigger. Travis Scott's stage design, the crazy stuff you see, cost a shocking $5 million. And so as Travis Scott has this history of inciting his concert goers to get out of control, to be chaotic, because the edge of chaos is entertaining, and he can charge more, uh, money and get more people to come so make himself and Rock Nation and Live Nation more money. Now in the aftermath of what happened I'm sure they have a team of uh, lawyers and PR people trying to pay off victims and control the narrative so uh, nobody ends up in jail from their side. Now jail might sound kind of far-fetched or prison might sound kind of far-fetched unless you Think back or know about a heavy metal group called Great White and their 2003 Rhode Island concert incident that left 100 people dead when pyrotechnics went wrong. And the band's stage manager and the concert venue's owners eventually pled guilty to 100 counts of involuntary manslaughter. They got about four or five years in prison and I'm sure some lawsuits happened. Um, now, in the past, I would never have considered the possibility that Travis Scott could face legal consequences, but uh, somebody's gonna, and who knows with what goes on in the world now. I mean, crowd control obviously failed, and if you have a global pop star telling people to not follow concert rules, and he's already been convicted of it twice, albeit on a small level, it's, it's kind of not hard to imagine a Texas prosecutor going for it. I mean, that would get the prosecutor's name all over the media and set them up for a political run in the future. I'm just throwing out ideas, call me cynical. But in the age of Donald Trump, you would be naive not to consider the fact that all this stuff is figuring into different people's strategies for their own professional lives. Uh, panic and desperation spread through the crowd of 50,000, mostly young people, just as the hometown hero, he's from Houston, Travis Scott took the stage Friday night. Stampede came like a wave, an unstoppable movement of bodies that couldn't be held back. There were people collapsing, people gasping for air. Some of the concert goers lifted up unconscious bodies of friends and surfed them 
over the crowd, not the fun kind of surfing people do at those concerts, but they were surfing unconscious, sometimes dead bodies. Others shouted out for help with CPR and pleaded for the concert to stop, but it kept going. We don't know if Travis Scott heard these pleas or not. In the end, at least eight people died, ranging in age from 14 to 27, and that's young. That means they got trampled. I mean, uh, you know, they just didn't get scared and have a heart attack. And hundreds more were treated for injuries at a field hospital uh, near the Energy Park in Houston. And even a 10-year-old kid got treated, luckily. The child didn't die. So Saturday morning, uh, Saturday morning, officials in Houston were at a loss to explain how the concert, part of the two-day World Music Festival organized by Live Nation and Travis Scott, had transformed just like that from a celebration to a struggle for life. And so, and the people who were at the outdoor concert um, were also struggling to figure it out. And um, they described a thrust of the crowd that wouldn't let up, like a pushing, as soon as he took the stage at 9 p.m. It was like hell, said Nick Johnson, 17, who still had his concert bracelet on as he spoke to the press on Saturday morning. Everybody was just in the back trying to rush to the front. People, people were literally grabbing and pinching at my body trying to get up from the ground, said Chris Lay, 23, adding that he lost contact with his friends as he tried to make it out alive. I was fighting for my life and it seemed like there was no way out, he said. The event appears to be one of the deadliest crowd control disasters at a concert in America in many years. Now, uh, worse episodes have occurred at venues in other parts of the world. Uh, you know, it cuts across all genres of music, uh, all genres of music, including an EDM festival in 2010 in Germany. Uh, 18 people were unfortunately trapped and crushed. Uh, and the most recent bad one in the U.S. was way back in '79, uh, as far as trampling it was in uh, in Cincinnati. 11 people got crushed. Uh, but the deaths in Houston are particularly devastating, of course, given the fact that we're coming out of over a year of pandemic restrictions. People are really excited to get back and do stuff in public. Quote, young people with bright futures, those were the people who were at the event, said Lena Hidalgo, uh, the top executive for Harris County, which is where Houston is located. Uh, she and other officials at an afternoon news conference struggled to explain what had taken place the night before. Quote, perhaps the plans were inadequate, perhaps the plans were good, but they weren't followed, perhaps it was something else entirely, she said, calling for an outside investigation. There's a lot of unanswered questions, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner said. Indeed, there are. Now, some of these questions raised by concert goers and uh, Harris County and Houston officials included whether there'd been adequate security and medical personnel on hand for the event, and mainly whether the concert could have been stopped before things got out of control. Now, Travis Scott played through his, I think, his whole set of music, urging the crowd on at times and at other times acknowledging uh, at other times, pausing to acknowledge something was wrong. So he knew something was wrong. How much did he know? We don't know. An ambulance entered the crowd around 9.30. Now, at big concerts, people always fall out. So I don't want to just say he knew what was going on. But like I said in the beginning, Live Nation ended up stopping the concert roughly 30 minutes earlier than planned, around 10.10 10 p.m. But that was 40 minutes after city officials said the mass casualty event had begun. It's hard to think they didn't know something was going on, but maybe it was just out of control. And uh, another little factoid that people were playing up is that one security officer, though people were saying it was a lot of people, who knows what the truth will be, got pricked in the neck as he tried to restrain someone at the concert, like, like a needle, the chief of police said, and the officer passed out, but he was revived using Narcan which of course uh, reverses the effects of opioid overdose. So somebody jabbed him in the neck. Of course, at a concert of 50,000 people, you know, you could have a dope fiend with a needle, I guess. It doesn't mean that was a planned thing, but who knows? Uh, quote, the medical staff did notice a prick that was similar to a prick that you would get if somebody was trying to inject. So it does look like that cop was hit, or that security officer was hit with a needle. 
And another element of the investigation, according to a Harris County official, would be whether there were too many people in attendance or at least pushed into a small area. Earlier in the day, there had been people rushing the gate and there might have been a lot of people in there without tickets. Now at the news conference, officials said the concert had not been overcrowded, but this totally contradicts what many people there said and these visuals uh, in a video of the concert. Um, and then uh, uh, Travis Scott, like I said in the beginning, was saying, I want to see some rages. Who wants to rage? And moments later, he said, oh, there's an ambulance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But, so why didn't he stop? He was trying to calm the crowd down, but why didn't he stop the thing? Is it because he has a $5 million stage set and it's too much in motion to stop it? I don't know. Supposedly for a few seconds, the music did appear to stop. Travis Scott looked toward the crowd and appeared to ask what was happening. But then he just continued on and at least eight people are dead. And now in the aftermath, you know, you got the lawyers, the ambulance chasers on TV looking for people. There's probably going to be class action lawsuit. There's already a bunch of lawsuits filed. And I'll just leave you with this. Having lived in Hollywood for a while now and being an actual uh, person who makes a living making, you know, content, and being a real student of American history and society, I personally think that the corporate entertainment complex of which Travis Scott and his baby mom, the pseudo self-made cheap makeup magnet Kylie Jenner are key members of has become uh, one of the most dangerous things facing society. I mean, it's just a bunch of out of control people pushing the edge of chaos to make more and more money. Now let's circle back to the quote and the stuff I talked about at the beginning with Jay-Z and uh, relative to the, some of these conspiracy theories I won't go into around this. Um, we do know that the idea that entertainers uh, sacrifice people for fame and fortune has really taken hold in the public imagination and perhaps for good reason. Now, I'm pretty careful about making wild connections between things merely to get more views, but I will say that I was shocked, like I was really shocked, you know, years ago when Watch the Throne came out. The Jay-Z and Kanye album was full of references to Aleister Crowley and then, of course, going back to the song Run This Town Tonight, Jay-Z wore Do What Thou Wilt on a sweatshirt. Now, I'm going to tell you what that means in full. Aleister Crowley is the father of modern Satanism. And Do What Thou Wilt is the whole of the law, is the essence of what that religion movement idea is about. Do whatever you want. Okay, so Do What Thou Wilt is the whole of the law. Jay-Z's wearing this sweatshirt. That's a quote from Aleister Crowley. That's the essence of modern Satanism. It's all about do whatever you want. Nobody can tell anybody anything. There's no rules and boundaries in society. The chorus of that song is sung by Frank Ocean, who was kind of at the forefront of this whole idea that gender is totally fluid, let's just say. So you could kind of see all the elements of a lot of stuff that's going on in society breaking down and no one wants to follow any rules and everything is okay and don't tell me what to do. Everyone's quitting their job. Um, but And Jay-Z is wearing a sentence from the Church of Satan. That's facts. So look up Aleister Crowley. He's the father of modern day Satanism. He's one of the 20th century's most influential philosophers, even though you might not know it. This world that we live in of you could be anything you want. There's no boundaries. Lack of boundaries is chaos. Total chaos is fun until it goes off the rails like he did at the Travis Scott concert the other night. Not having any boundaries or being told what to do is fun. Chaos is fun until it goes off the rails, which is what happened at Travis Scott's concert last night. And let's just... One more time, remind you of the chorus sung by the gender-fluid Frank Ocean to Jay-Z's song, No Church in the Wild, off Watch the Throne, and Jay-Z's running uh, Rock Nation, which is part of Live Nation, and I'm sure they did the deal with Jay-Z so he could 
uh, attract young artists like Travis Scott and billions of dollars of business has been done between Jay-Z and Live Nation. Human beings in a mob, what's a mob to a king? What's a king to a god? What's a god to a non-believer who don't believe in anything? Will he make it out alive? All right, all right. No church in the wild. And remember, Live Nation, like I said, has done billions of dollars of business with the Carter family. And uh, Jay-Z professes, do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. And he's a, I'm sure a guy Travis Scott must look up to. Well, he's formally in a biz, some sort of business relationship with him because Live Nation is putting on this concert and Jay-Z is the centerpiece of Live Nation. And uh, if do what thou wilt is the whole of the law, it's no wonder those kids passed away in Houston as Travis Scott was hopping across the stage, possessed by his quest to get the big bag. Our profit, American dope. Watch what you wish for. You just might get it.